thanking God for different groups of people who helped to get us through and for the ways that God has blessed us uh, through these months together. We'll be lighting candles, and at the end of our service, there's going to be an opportunity for anyone who's here today who has suffered loss or wants to remember uh, someone who had a deep impact in their life, who's passed on. Uh, you can come forth and, and uh, light a candle in, in their remembrance. Or if there's someone that you want to remember before God who's really helped you in these past 20 months, um, feel free to light a candle in their memory as well as we all pray together. So let's join together and uh, let's sing our hearts out. Let's, uh, let's put our lives before the Lord this morning. Tim. <sighs> It's been three months since I for last was here singing with you. Uh, in fact, that's the longest time I didn't lead music at Hopwood since 1982. So it's the longest vacation I've taken. So, so. Uh, We're going to sing our call to worship, Bless the Lord My Soul. We'll sing that chorus three times. Then we'll turn and sing our opening hymn, number 21 in your hymnals, if you're using hymnals, How Great Thou Art. So if you're able, please stand and let us sing together. Bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name. i 
pray together. Lord, we, we know that you are great, and we feel it to the depths of our being. Lord, even more than that, we know that you are good, and so we bless you. And we thank you for the richness of the life that you have enabled us to live. We thank you for the depth of your love that sent Jesus to us, and we thank you even for the gifts of the cross. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would be present among us today, teaching us by your word, helping us to be honest in everything we do, say, and think, and blessing us with your presence, feeding us with good food at the table, and sending us away with a message to share. We bless you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let's listen now to the word of the Lord. of aged wine, choice pieces with marrow, and refined aged wine. And on this mountain he will swallow up the covering which is over all peoples, even the veil which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time. And the Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces and he will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken, and it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God for whom we have waited that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 80. Restore us, O God of hosts. We know this song, and even though you, you don't have music for the verses there, if you know it, sing it along with me. But we all can sing the chorus together. Oh, 
I'm reading from Isaiah. I'm sorry, I already did that. Revelation, Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them and he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there shall be no longer any death, and there shall be no longer any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn, Abide With Me, will sing the first, the third, and the fifth verses. Good morning. Our prayer this morning is on the insert in your order of worship. We'll read together. If you'll join in on the bold type, I'll start us off. Gathering God, you bring us together in the midst of many things. Here we stand between grief and hope familiarity and strangeness, the The old old we know know, and and the the new we can't quite see. see. Scripture tells us there is a time to mourn, 
and even you, Jesus, were moved to tears by the death of your friend and the sorrow of those you loved. As we mourn these losses, Lord, hear our cry. As we look over the past two years, we find much to mourn, faces missing from our midst, laughter that is unique in all the world, companionship that cannot be replaced, friendship that will be sorely missed. Duard Walker, Robert Shields, John Villanueva, Jane Bayless, Mike Berger, Ray Lyons, Liz Davis, Bennett Rowan, Leroy Garland, and other friends and relatives. Mark Fraser. We name them now, blessing them with peace for their onward journey and praying for all who grieve their loss. We mourn lost connection, lost time with friends and family. We grieve over loneliness and isolation, anxiety and uncertainty, the deaths of so many around the world the loss of the way things used to be. Yet our mourning is also mixed, mixed with thanksgiving for the lives we have loved, for the ways we have been spared from disease, mixed with hope for new possibilities, new ways of being in the world, hope for resurrection. As we live through the next few months, not knowing where the pandemic will take us, not fully understanding how it has changed us. Move us with the hope of resurrection. May we know you weep beside us, and may we be surprised by the newness you bring. Amen. Please stand while I read the gospel. Our gospel is from John chapter 11. Therefore, when Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him, and she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And so the Jews were saying, behold, how he loved him. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of him who was blind have kept this man also from dying? Jesus, therefore, began again being deeply moved within, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. But Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, If you believe, you will see the glory of God. And so they removed the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou heardest me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. And because of the people standing around, I said it that they may believe that thou didst send me. 
And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please sit. Our communion hymn is Ubi Caritas. We'll sing the first three verses. Caritas, espera, espera, Deus e Pest, Deus e Pest. The love of Christ joins us together, let us rejoice in Him and in our love and care for us. Good morning. Today, <clears throat> today I have both a meditation and an explanation to share with you. Quite a few years ago now, when I was in college, I came across this quote in a book I was reading. And uh, I worked pretty hard to try and figure out what book it was. It's been a while. Uh, but both my search and Google let me down. Uh, but Hopwood, some of you more well-read Hopwoodians might be able to uh, share with me where it came from, if you recall it. Anyway, the quote uh, went something like this. And this is the message of autumn, that something lost and fallen will one day be made new again. And that quote struck a chord in me, so much so that I decided to make it my email address. And thus, I have been messageofautumn at hotmail.com ever since. <laughs> However, <clears throat> what I've learned is what seemed like a good idea when you're 21 or 22 years old does not always hold up when you're almost 40. Yet, in spite of the annoyance of having to occasionally spell it out at stores or on the phone, Yes, M-E-S-S-A-G-E-A-U-A-O-F-A-U-T-U-M-N. And then face the silent judgment which follows me spelling it out. I have hung on to old message of autumn at Hotmail and all. Perhaps I keep it because I still believe in the truth contained in its name. 
Or perhaps I still secretly have hopes of releasing a musical album by that title. Who knows? Regardless, I felt moved to share those words from my early 20s with you this morning. And this is the message of autumn, that something lost and fallen will one day be made new again. Truly, over the last 18 months, there has been much loss. For many of us, at various times, we have experienced a fallenness unlike any other time in our lives. And yet, here we are, gathered together at the Lord's table. And we hear Jesus' words this morning to Martha, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And then, what was lost was made new again. And Lazarus rose from the tomb, and came out. And here we are, gathered back together at the Lord's table. And we hear the words of the enthroned Savior, as shared by John in the book of Revelation, saying, And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will, will, be, will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, <clears throat> Behold, I am making all things new. This is the message of autumn. Over the last 18 months, we have lived it. Today, at the Lord's table, let us join the prophet Isaiah <clears throat> in his proclamation. Behold, this is our God for whom we have waited, that he might come to save us. The body of Christ broken for you. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. blood of Christ also shed for you. Take, eat, remember, <clears throat> rejoice that something lost and fallen will and is being made new again. Amen.
This morning, let us grieve as those who believe. Let us rejoice as those who believe. And let us also give as those who believe. Amen. The 20 months of the COVID pandemic have been historic and heart-wrenching. At first, we stared into the abyss, not quite knowing how bad things could get, and then we discovered pretty bad. Each of us got through this period, each of us who are here today, coping as best we could. We could. As a gathered church, we've been somewhat upended as well. Being inside a building, seems a little strange after all of these months of being outside. We're grateful, though, to be together, thankful for what we have. At the same time, we don't want to simply move on as if nothing has really happened to us. We want to acknowledge the pain of our losses that we have suffered. We want to pause, to remember, and to thank the people who helped us through the darkest months. We want to stop and pray for one another, for the difficulties that are still ahead. And we want to acknowledge our deep dependence and reliance upon God. This morning's sermon time will allow us to hear from sisters and brothers whose experiences in some way represent those of the, the, the larger group. We're calling this a service of remembrance and hope. This morning, we invite each of you to participate in the readings, the prayers, the lighting of candles. And we will also hear from several of our friends who will tell us a bit about the things that they have carried over the past months 
and how they got through these months of COVID. Each of these folks will speak and then light a candle of remembrance and hope. When all of the bigger candles are lit, we will invite you to come forward and to light a candle in memory of someone or something that you have lost. Or maybe you will choose to light a candle of hope for better days that are still ahead. Our first candle is the candle of lament. Reading from Psalm 69, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I've come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I'm worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Each of us has been affected by this pandemic in different ways. Let us now take just a moment to name and to grieve the emotional, physical, and spiritual toll of this past year and a half. Not for the purpose of moving backward or dwelling on the pain, but instead for the purpose of being honest with ourselves and with one another. In acknowledging and grieving our losses, we might create room in our hearts for hope, creativity, joy, ingenuity. As we light these candles, may our sadness unite us. May our solidarity bring us comfort. And may our common prayers empower us to live into the days that are ahead with faith and hope. As we light this next candle, we remember those we have lost in the past two years. Over 700,000 people in the U.S. and over 5 million around the world have died from COVID. We also remember those who have died in our own community in the past two years, whose losses we have been, able, we have been unable to mourn here together. A few years ago, John selected this song to be sung at his funeral, and today I will honor his wishes and I will recite the lyrics to Go Rest High on That Mountain by Vince Gill. I know your life on earth was troubled, and, oh gosh, and only you could know the pain. You weren't afraid to face the devil. You were no stranger to the rain. Go rest high on that mountain, Son, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven a shouting, love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cried the day you left us. We, we gathered round your grave to grieve. Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. Go rest high on that mountain. Son, your work here on earth is done. Go to heaven a shouting, love for the Father and the Son. Go rest high on that mountain. Son, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven a shouting, love for the Father and the Son. Go to heaven a shouting, love for the Father and the Son. Thank you.
As we light the third candle, we remember the leaders who have helped walk us through this pandemic. They have wrestled over hard decisions to keep us safe and connected. I confess I'm an introvert and I don't like change. And fear of the unknown plays a big role in my life. I pr frequently prefer to run away, and I can tell by some of your faces that you do too. However, many months into this pandemic, the isolation became a bit much for even me. And I thought if I had to look at one more screen in lieu of a sparkling in the flesh smile, I would go bonkers, and perhaps I did a bit. But I am truly thankful for the on-the-spot pivoting efforts of so many who work to maintain our connections with each other, making decisions for our Hopwood community with everyone in mind. From every perspective possible was not an easy task for anyone, and many days it overwhelmed. And now we wonder what's next. It sometimes feels as if we're coming out of a dark cave and our eyes aren't adjusted to the sunlight yet. It's blinding, we can't see the path ahead, and it's about more than just us. It's universal. Will we learn how to live with what comes next? Some people say that the only sure thing in this world are taxes, death, and change. But it's not just about commerce or physical survival. Our community is being reimagined and reformed, affecting our very life together. It's a challenge to see the opportunity for lives being regenerated when pressed with an overwhelming sense of loss. But life is God, given, not just evidenced over 2,000 years ago with a birth in a stable in Bethlehem, but here and now, yesterday and tomorrow, before the beginning and beyond the end. I see now that God became Christ, not only for the theological kingdom of God reasons that I don't fully understand, but also because we need God's presence in bodily form by our bodily sides. We are for each other what Jesus was for all, God incarnate. The experience with screens showed me that the divine ties of relationship run deep to our core. Regardless of what happens next, what new threshold we find ourselves standing in, we are the connecting threads of incarnate love for each other. Those three constants I mentioned earlier, taxes, death, change, they do loom large and they command our attention at times, but when compared with what's at our core, they merely flicker at the surface. Love is God given. Creativity is God given. We are God given for each other. And it's in that sweet spot, that's where we live, move, and have our being. Amen. As we light this next candle, we remember the people who have cared for others during the pandemic. Doctors, nurses, chaplains, teachers, and other caregivers, they have sacrificed time and energy, have witnessed some of the hardest parts of this pandemic, and have been physically and emotionally exhausted.
The past, the past two years have been senseless. We have lost all sense of time as trucks with coolers were brought in for storage and funeral homes were overwhelmed. Sometimes there were just too many people dying. And at other times, the family was sick themselves and decisions couldn't be made. So time went by the wayside. We catch ourselves thinking back in time to 2019 as if it were just last year, the between then and now just a jumble of days and weeks and hours. We lost the availability of our senses. We could not see our loved ones when we or they were sick, or our support system, our church people, our schoolmates. We could not see them or touch them, hear their breath as they contemplated a problem, smell their powder on our skin after they hugged us. And we lost our sense of place as rituals were put on hold. I had a woman who could not have her husband's funeral because she could not get into Canada. I walked with an older gentleman stumbling over hills to get to his wife's grave in a private service outside in the cold as he desperately needed to put her to rest and this was the most allowed at the time. There was no washing of feet or tearing of a communal loaf of bread. Isaiah 59 describes, like the blind, we feel our way along the wall, groping like those without eyes. Perhaps the darkness is God's mercy so that we don't fully know all that we've been through. I'm not sure I could handle it. When preparing for this, I was asked to answer the questions of where is God and where have I seen God? There is no question in my mind where God is. God is always with me, among us, caring and knowing. But where have I seen God? I don't know. I'm still in the midst of it. But what I do know is this. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. So I squint and peer and keep looking, always searching for the dawn from on high that will break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. As we light this next candle, we remember those older adults who have been isolated due to vulnerability or illness. Many have isolated from friends and family members, not knowing when they will be able to gather with others. They have feared the loss of their own health and the loss of those they love. Two summers ago, I was almost packed, almost had a ticket to go to Spain to see Portia, Nathan, Eloria, Amelie, and Isaiah. 
but it was not meant to be. During COVID-19, many older folks felt isolation from friends and family. However, we have seen God in friends who visited us and sometimes stayed in their cars with their mask on like Chris did to deliver a book for our book club, or sent cards and letters like Karen did asking me if I wanted to go hiking. It was a godsend. We also got cards from our Hopwood Care Committee. These were things that lifted us up. Our small group walking visits, events, our book club discussions over Zoom or on Mel's porch were wonderful gifts from God and from our folks here. As time went on, without the majority of people in our area and country not doing enough to contain the virus, many of us felt frustration sadness, and even anger build up and continuing to build up as, as we have an inability to see our family and friends as we would like or even as frequently as we would like. Thankfully, our family in China is safe. They have no cases in their province of 10 million people. They still wear a mask on a subway, and Portia tells me that she's so grateful for their country to protect their elderly members. We are grateful to the medical researchers who had been working on the science to develop the vaccinations, which were such a joy for us to receive. And they were inspired, I am certain, by God. We have seen God's presence in our church leaders as they have spent countless hours navigating various stages of reentry, keeping us safe with streaming, outdoor services in Agape, and Zoom meetings. Additionally, our small group Bible and prayer group has been a sweet communion with God and friends. Personally, our work on promoting care of God's creation has been a spiritual blessing to me and others on the Creation Care Committee. And we invite you to join us next Saturday to help with the invasive plant removal in addition to any of the other work that needs to be done here at Hopwood. In our own case, living on Ripson Mountain does afford us with the opportunity to walk every day in God's beautiful nature and keep in touch with our nearby neighbor should we have emergencies. In addition, our dog has been a blessing to us during COVID. Another community benefit has been the online ordering and pickup of groceries and materials that Mike needed for his projects, and that has kept, kept us safe. Some in our congregation have had to wait for elective surgeries while they were in extreme pain. They've, we've also had the loss of our family, uh, our membership has also lost family members. And we thank God for this, case, this time that cases are decreasing in our area, hospitals, so that they can have some relief from this pain. Are we frightened or getting Ill, uh, of getting ill during the pandemic? Of course. Are we worried or praying for families who have to navigate school, work, church, their children's health, and other activities? Yes, of course. We are, I, I want to also insert that we're grateful for the VA because they in Johnson City have, have been with my husband all the way through COVID in scanning and making sure that he has treatment during the, his second course of chemo. We know that God will give us all strength to persevere 
And thank you all for praying for us. Amen. During this time, we remember the parents who have struggled to care for their children's health, juggling work, school, social and spiritual formation in unexpected ways. They have often felt overwhelmed and anxious. I became a new parent right before the pandemic started. One of the hardest parts of being a parent in these last 20 months is the constant negotiation between what's best for my child's physical health, her social and emotional health, and my own mental health. Claire was born three months before the pandemic started, so things were starting to shut down just as we as a family were beginning to get back into public. Because of this, part of what I've had to carry in the midst of the pandemic has been just the loss of what I imagined the first year of Claire's life would be like. Surrounded by her Hopwood family, spending time playing with other children. Many people we loved saw Claire shortly after she was born and then not much again until she was walking. At the same time, I find hope in the joy Claire finds in moments of connection we have had. Playing with our small group in the backyard, eating brunch on the Perry's patio, jumping on the Scott's trampoline. She remembers everyone's name. It's crazy. And she will often shout the names of many of you randomly during the middle of the week, even if she's only interacted with you once or twice. She still talks about Rosemary Shield's pot pie often. As most of you know, my parenting and pandemic journey was made more difficult because of postpartum depression and anxiety that did not respond to medication or treatment. This was exacerbated by the isolation of early motherhood on top of the pandemic. I still don't fully understand what I went through, but it was unbearable. Many sleepless nights, I found my prayers echoing Mary's words in this morning's gospel. Jesus, if you had been here, this would not have happened. Where in the world have you been? I don't have answers, but I can say that the only way I survived was that something, someone, bore the unbearable, carried its weight when I couldn't. God was present, even when all my senses said otherwise, often through many of you. Jesus does not stop Lazarus from dying, but Jesus does weep alongside his sisters. And then he does bring the unexpected, shocking hope of resurrection. Right now, I'm keeping my eyes peeled for that hope coming into the world in large and small ways. And I'm keeping my ears ready, listening for that voice whispering, behold, I am making all things new. During this time, we also want to pray for our youth. We remember our youth who have been affected by the pandemic. They have lost the social and spiritual connections at times of school and church and family. Their normal schedules have been upended as they've marked major milestones without the physical presence of many in the community. 
And so this morning, uh, Morgan Lee is going to come talk a little bit about his experience and light a candle. Uh, so when this whole pandemic thing started, a lot of people my age kind of brushed it off as something that would eventually blow over. Because I remember it was the day before my school went on spring break and my friend Alan jokingly stated how crazy it would be if our spring break expanded to two weeks instead of one. Uh, he kind of undershot his estimate because he ended up being out of school for 24 weeks. And when we came back, we were just sitting in our pajamas learning about the French Revolution through a computer screen. It was nice to be able to take my dog on an hour-long walk every day or pick up an activity like guitar, but after a few weeks, the novelty of no school and not really being able to be with friends wore off. With youthhood being such a vital part of a person's life, it was definitely hard for many of us to lose such important moments of our lives. Like, my older brother Caleb didn't really have a prom or the entire class of 2020 had their graduation virtually. And just the word virtually now is enough to make pretty much anyone cringe. But the hardest thing for me about COVID was though the, yeah, was the mental strain that it put on us. Because though the virus itself didn't really affect us, the isolation did. Because being alone at such a vital transition era can be really hard. One of my friends who has suffered from depression hit the roughest patch in life and was considering self-harm. So me and their other friends would sneak out of our houses just to be with them and play Minecraft or board games on their porch. And just the fact that we had to sneak out to do that and be with them was horrible. Thankfully, now they're doing well and they're in the happiest time of their life, so I can thank God for that. And even when it came to church, we would just be sitting on our couch in our pajamas, watching a small computer screen, listening to Mr. Tim or my dad preach. And I cannot describe how thankful I was whenever we came back, even when I was outside, just to see everyone and say hi and get all the comments of, look how tall you've gotten. <laughs> this, this community is so strong and so kind, and I just I hope to stay connected with it for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm so glad that we're all back here together and that I can speak in front of an actual group of people. You all have been so gracious and amazing. And on the behalf of the rest of the youth, thank you. A reading from Psalm 30. Lord my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Amen. We trust that rejoicing does come in the morning and that our God of power and might can truly turn wailing into dancing, clothing us with joy. As we light our final candle, I invite us to consider those new discoveries and practices we hope to bring with us moving forward, the ways we have grown and those things we have learned. As we come forward to light our own candles, I invite us to name aloud or silently the ways in which we have grown or the new awareness and appreciation we have discovered. As we wrap things up this morning, we invite you, any of you who would like to light a candle in remembrance of a person or something that you've lost or something that you're hoping for, uh, to come on forward and to light these little tea candles around. Uh, step forward at this time, and uh, Katie's going to be playing a song, and uh, you can just step on down at any point. Katie?
you'll all turn to hymn 708, let's sing, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Let's stand together. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian pray together. Lord, we thank you for this time of remembering and grieving, but we also know, Lord, that you've got work for us to do still. There is great work to do in our communities, in our families, in our church, and so, Lord, we set ourselves to the tasks that are ahead. We strain forward to the things that are still before us, and we ask God that you would continue to be with us every step of the way, teaching us, blessing us, sending us forth to do good work in the world. We know, Lord, that those that we have lost will always be with us, just as that long train of saints that stretch back into the, into the generations. And we thank you, Lord, that, that we're here now in this place at this time with these people and we ask god that you would make something of our lives too we want to be your servants your disciples so send us forth in jesus name amen let me share just a couple of announcements with you and before we let you go you've been so patient um as we've gotten started and uh in a couple services and Sunday school and youth groups, we're absolutely needing some volunteers. And uh, if you can help reading scripture, preparing communion, passing out bulletins, please contact Alyssa. Uh, her email's in the bulletin and we'll get you set up with, uh, with something that, that you can do. We have a church work day next Saturday, November 13th from nine to two. And uh, we need folks to help inside and outside with a whole range of kinds of projects. So uh, come and, and uh, help out for a few hours as uh, we work to keep this old building in good shape. The church board will meet this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And uh, so uh, board members, that'll be in, present, uh, in person down in the library. We want to say thank you to everybody that helped out with the quilt show and uh, the art sale. Uh, it was really successful. I think it was our most successful fundraiser yet. And we're especially thankful to uh, Nick Blosser for the donation of all of those wonderful pictures and paintings. I want to let you know that Nick's exhibit over at, at Milligan is still up. It's in this very nearest building, the very nearest door to Hopwood. And uh, it's going to be showing Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. So if you uh, haven't seen it yet, please get over and take a look at some of Nick's work. Yes, Nick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. 
Um, we do have some fundraisers that are coming up. We're having a, a poinsettia, memorial poinsettia uh, project coming up uh, in, in the season of Advent where we can uh, purchase poinsettias with, with those we love and want to remember name on them. We'll be uh, displaying them in the sanctuary during the month of, uh, of December, and then you can take those home at, at Christmas time. You can find more information on the table in back. Also, we have some more names that can go up on the memorial wall if you'd like to give a gift in memory of someone or perhaps in your own family's name. And then we have a Christmas sale coming up on Saturday, December the 4th. And uh, we need food and Christmas gifts and, and crafts for that as well. So lots of ways to, to get involved. Uh, we're selling wreaths again uh, this year. They come from Roan, Roan Mountain and they're beautiful. And if you'd like to purchase one, all the donations for all of this stuff will be going to, uh, to pay down our, our building debt. And finally, um, we're going to get together for a Thanksgiving meal this year. So we're restarting our Thanksgiving feast, 1 o'clock on Thanksgiving Day. And if you can let Marcia know some of the things you want to bring. Um, we're setting up tables inside and outside, <coughs> hoping for good weather. Uh, games, we'll play some games after the, afterward as well. So especially if, uh, if, please come, if you can come, if you know someone that needs a place to be, send them our way. And uh, we, we'd love to have a, a full house for, uh, for Thanksgiving. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yes, Karen? Great, collard greens in the foyer. Um, let's, uh, let's close by singing our dismissal chorus, shall we? Go, my children, fed and nourished closer to me. Grow in love and love by serving joyful and free. Hear my spirit's power filled you. Hear his tender comfort still you. Oh, my children, fed and nourished, joyful and free. Go forth to serve the Lord and to serve the world. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.